Well, I just, I just want to greet you, say hello. I am, uh, so I am most recently, I think I get the prize for coming from the farthest. I'm most recently, my wife and I were most recently pastoring a church in New Zealand. So uh, it is not close to here, right? Yes. I was telling some folks beforehand, though, you cannot beat Disney and the beach, though. That's what I'm talking about. New Zealand may have Lord of the Rings, but they don't have Disney. Well, they've got the beach, but it's too cold to go swimming there anyways. So, like, we're in a good place here. But this morning, what I want to do first is just share a little bit about what Space Coast City Fest is, and then I just want to bring a message of encouragement just along those lines. The sermon title is Engage. It's not enough for us to just be present, not just to show up, but we need to engage. And so we're going to explore that a little bit. But before we do, I want to give you such, uh, there's an amazing opportunity coming. And, and it's not the Palau team who I work with. Luis Palau has been an evangelist uh, for over 50 years all over the world. It's, it's, and I love what he was saying this morning. It's not the words you're going to hear this morning. It's not as amazing as your pastors are. It's not the pastors. It's going to be the body of Christ that engages in their communities, engages in their families, engages in their workplaces. And so that's to me why I get excited about what's happening in Brevard County. So what we have is Space Coast City Fest. I'm going to show a short video here in just a moment, but I just want to let you know what is Space Coast City Fest. Space Coast City Fest is a unified effort of churches looking to see the kingdom of God happen here in Brevard County. So we have over 140 churches that are coming together already. And from everything that I've heard, that is unprecedented, unprecedented here in this community to have 140 churches that are coming together in the name of Jesus for one sole person purpose to share the gospel. There, there's, there's no other reason except to lift high the name of Jesus, and the gospel is going to be proclaimed boldly. So there's going to be a ton of opportunities, and I'll let pastors um, let you know as those opportunities come. The major opportunity is going to be March 28th and 29th. At, uh, it's going to be, we've tried to get it as, as in the middle of the county as possible. So it's going to be in Vieira. So Titusville folks can get there. Palm Bay folks can get there. And it's going to be at Space Coast Daily Park. We'll have some of the biggest Christian music artists there. I just got back from City Fest in East Texas where the same thing was happening. We had the Newsboys there. We had Lecrae there. It was a powerful time. Literally, I think over 1,500 people responded to the gospel. Um, and so... And, and here's the encouragement, even before we get there. It's not people that have heard that Toby Mac's going to be there, that Lecrae's going to be there. It's you inviting someone. It's you being involved in someone's life. And that's this morning what we're going to talk a little bit about. But I just want to encourage you to start preparing your hearts because there's an opportunity like no other happening in Brevard County. And this is something that, that I just get the pleasure of connecting with folks like Pastor Josh and just hearing their stories, hearing their passion. I was already encouraged in pre-service prayer this morning of the intentionality of what this church is. I love saying this, this these empty seats are opportunities to be filled. And so it's just readjusting. So I just play a quick video. And just so you know, the heart of this video is to get you praying for your friends and family that do not know Jesus. And so we have something called a prayer card that will be given out to all the churches probably around January. But this is kind of a, a sneak kind of clip ahead of time. So if you play the video and then we will, we will keep going. How do folks, when they respond to the gospel, say we have another 1,500 that respond here in Brevard County, where are they going? The most important piece is that we're referring them to local churches. And just so you know, how do folks get referred to churches? If folks from Palm Bay Baptist are bringing someone, they're going to go be referred right back to Palm Bay Baptist. Literally, we get those referral cards the next day. So it happens on a Saturday and a Sunday. By the Monday, those referral cards are already here at Palm Bay Baptist reaching out, wanting to get them connected into the connection card and the connection table and the connection. We've got it happening here, right? We've got the processes. We're waiting to connect. So I just want to give you the heads up that this is not mass evangelism. This is personal evangelism in a concerted effort. And that's just mobilizing the body of Christ to engage their family and friends. How many of you can think of one person that you could be praying for? We want to up the ante to at least five. So on that prayer card, we're going to give you, and it's going to circulate probably around January, we're going to give all of the different churches that are participating in these prayer cards. Get those five people, but even start thinking about them now. Invite them along to church. You don't have to wait for City Fest, right? But this is a really amazing opportunity for the body of Christ to come together, together to see something amazing happen. Amen? So this morning, I just want to share a brief word with you. 
And, and the, like I said, the title is Engage. And as I've been thinking about this idea of the body of Christ engaging, I couldn't help but re- be reminded of this. Literally, so soccer practice or soccer game happened on Friday. Who remembers either back in the day when you took your kids to the games or you yourself were in the games? We're in the middle of soccer season, right? And I am way too competitive as a dad. I'm just going to let you know right now. I am way too invested. I'm the kind of dad that needs to remind myself, like, just chill out. Like, even if I tell myself beforehand, like, Jesse, don't get over-involved. I'm, like, standing up, muttering under my breath. Like, I'm getting way too involved. My son's six, by the way. We're not talking, like, we're not talking, like, high school sports, right? Just, Jesse, relax, right? But... Um, I, I do think my son is, is going to go pro, you know, like he's six years old, I can see it. Uh, I, I don't know. He's pretty good. He's better than I was. That's all I know. But, but here's, here's what I could see. My son was so frustrated after the game on Friday. On, on Friday. He was so frustrated. Now, you understand, he was sick. He was in the hospital this week. He's okay, but he was just kind of still wore down, and, and he still gave it his all, and I could see just he was frustrated because he wasn't as fast as he normally is. But he was even more frustrated because his team, they're not looking to go pro, right? His team, he had, he had two, two cousins, lovely little cousins, two girls on his team. And they were more interested in like playing a skipping game in the corner of the field, right? And then another one of his team, she, she got kicked in the face with the ball not too long ago. And so like if somebody's coming her way, she just, she like kindly gets out of their way and like gives them a free free, you know, free passage to the goal. And then my poor sick boy is just like running up and down the field, literally the only person on his team. How many of you know that you can be present and not be engaged? How many of you know that you can be in the game, but still not be engaged in the game? And too often the body of Christ turns up, but is not engaged. This morning, my, my encouragement to you is to get engaged in the game. And, and I know I'm preaching to the choir already, but it's, I needed that encouragement. Sometimes it's, it's with my own family. Get engaged. It's so easy in our social media era to be more engaged in the phone. And it just, you know, you're tired. And maybe you've been hit by a couple of balls before. And so you're kind of getting out of the way of the pain because it hurts a little bit. Or maybe you're just kind of your mind somewhere else and you're distracted by something else. This morning, that's the word, is to engage. You can be present and not be engaged. I've heard you've been in a series, Back to Basics, yes? So this morning, we're going to look at some key points of how to examine, are we engaging with our friends, with our family, to make an impact in the kingdom? We must make a shift as the body of Christ for not just getting the attendance record. Christians show up sometimes. But we want to we wanna play. We want to make a difference. Jesus was always present, but he was also always engaged. Our story this morning in Scripture is in Luke 19. I was watching last night, you know, like all the old school Bible stories. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he, right? We're going to be in the story of Zacchaeus. Luke chapter 19. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. He, being Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. And I'm going to read a lot more of that scripture, but that's just the the, the opening passage. So please be seated. Thank you for standing for the word. Something that stood out to me immediately in this initial passage is that Jesus was passing through. This, this, I would say, is initially one of the most powerful statements that we could read as far as applying it to our lives. Jesus was not on his way to Zacchaeus' house. Jesus was passing through. It is so important to just pause there. He was going somewhere else. And how many of you know today more than ever, we are so busy. We, we have the next thing to go to. I mean, I, I know even on a day like Sunday, it's a day of rest. But I'm sure you already have your plans. You know, your nap is already planned out. My nap is. My nap doesn't exist. I have three young kids. Like, but it, I've planned it out in my head, you know, if, can I escape them? 
you've planned out, I'm thinking about, you know, pizza at and Palm Bay is a pretty good spot for lunch. Like, I'm just, I'm th- I've planned out. And don't get in the way of pizza at. That's important. I, I need to get there. I need to get to lunch. We have already made plans, but Jesus was passing through. It is important that we don't miss opportunities when we are simply passing through. I love this author, John Tyson, says this. He says, missional lives don't happen by accident. Missional lives don't happen by accident. And it was this next phrase that I think is so important to also pass on to is, but on account of, but on account of the crowd, he could not meet Jesus. He could not see Jesus because he was small in stature. I just, I thought about as he's saying is Jesus has come down and rescued us. He's grabbed us. He's saved us. Do you know that we had some of our own on account ofs? We had reasons, we had things in the way that were keeping us from engaging with Jesus. But on account of his small stature, he could not see Jesus. Do you know that everyone around us will have reasons? Some of them good, some of them not so good. Of why they are unable to see who Jesus is. Church, my my encouragement this morning as we begin... Can we be a people that begins to remove those obstacles so that people can see who Jesus is? We need to remove on the account of. If they're small in stature, we need to help people up into that tree so they can see Jesus. We need to, as if we're going to be people that engage, we can't just be passing through. Because there's people that have barriers in their way where they cannot see and find and meet who Jesus is unless we identify those barriers. We have to overcome these boundaries. Otherwise, they may never meet Jesus. Chapter, verse 4 says this. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. Jesus engaged Zacchaeus. I have four very simple points from this story. Point one is this. Jesus engaged Zacchaeus where he was at. This is so important. Jesus engaged Zacchaeus where he was at. Where did he engage him? When he was in the tree. He was in the tree. He wasn't perfectly positioned when Jesus was perfectly rested, when Jesus was ready and in the mind space to deal with Zacchaeus. He engaged Zacchaeus when Zacchaeus was in a tree as Jesus had business elsewhere. I love this mandate that we are to be a people that go. One of the things that we instituted in my church back in New Zealand was this this idea of serving in the community. And initially it was called Go Day because we wanted to go on it, be a people that went out. But we changed it to Go Church because we need to be a church that goes. Amen? The power of the church does not rest on what happens on Sunday mornings. The power of the church rests on what happens on Monday mornings and what happens on Saturday nights and what happens at Wednesday at lunchtime when you just want a break but your coworker's there and just you feel a prompt from the Holy Spirit, pray for this person, ask them what's going on. That is where the power of the church will be released. And when we start talking about revival, revival is going to happen when people of God begin to release who the Spirit of God is, where they are placed where they're at. It's not going to be in the perfect place. There's never going to be a perfect place. We have some empty seats here where people are going to engage Jesus, but they're first going to engage him through you where you're placed, where you're at. If they don't first engage him with you, they're never going to engage him here. You can get the best signs in the world. You can get the best Christian music artists in the world. You can do all those things. But it's going to be through his people, letting the Spirit of God release through them in the workplace, in the family. Jesus engaged Zacchaeus where he was at. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Not wait for them to come to the perfect place. Go. Look up and see the people around you. This morning is a very practical sermon. What did Jesus do? He was aware. He was looking up. He saw that there was a need. He was passing through. We cannot be stuck in whatever's going on. Because you never know, whatever's going on, God may even want to use to bless someone else as well. Just encouraging this morning. Where can God engage people? He can engage them in your car or chariot like the Ethiopian eunuch. 
He can engage them at the drinking fountain like the woman at the well. He can engage them in court like the adulterous woman. He can engage them in jail with Paul and Silas and the prison guard that found Jesus because of that. He can engage them when climbing trees through Zacchaeus. He can engage them on the road like Paul on the road to Damascus. He can engage them at dinner when Jesus began washing the feet of those disciples or the woman with the alabaster box. What is the point here? It's not in Sunday mornings. That's, this is an amazing time. This is so important. This is where we lift high the name of Jesus boldly. But it's so that we may go lift his name boldly at dinner time. So that we may go release who he is boldly on the road. Instead of road rage, we need to be road gospel, right? We need to start reclaiming some of these opportunities to release who Jesus is. He engaged them where he was at. The gospel needs to engage people where they are, in their homes, in their workplaces. We must refuse to not just be passing through, waiting for the next thing. It's when the church realizes that we are to be mobilized even in the mundane that we can engage in the everyday. That is when revival will happen. That is when we will see God move. He is yearning to move. He is yearning to break out. He's yearning to see transformation happen. He's yearning to see the seats filled. But it's through our lives. It's, and it's through the most mundane things. We think doing the laundry and we don't realize the person next to us doing that laundry needs, needs a touch from Jesus. We're doing the laundry. We don't realize that our kids need us maybe more than we even need to do the laundry. Now, I know we need to do the laundry too, right? My wife, man, she's got that schedule of the laundry when it has to happen. But sometimes we may, might need to stop the laundry and speak into our kids' lives. Sometimes we might need to stop the laundry and speak into that person next to us. Number two, Jesus showed value to Zacchaeus. I think too often we sometimes think that this transaction is just going to happen. Jesus first engaged Zacchaeus where he was at, but then he showed value to him. I want to be your guest. He didn't even say I want. He said, I must be your guest. I must come to your house today. Zacchaeus is important. And why is Zacchaeus important? Because he's a child of God. Because God knew him before he was even in his mother's womb. We have to start catching a little bit of the heart of God for the people around us. Now, I, I'm like sometimes like the little girl with, with, who got kicked in the face with the ball. I've been hurt by that ball and by that person. And I'd much rather just go over here and then they go by. It's too great a sacrifice for them to go by. We have to lead with grace. We have to lead with forgiveness. We have to lay down bitterness. We might get hit with another ball, but do you know that the power of the cross is still just as powerful today as it has ever been? We have to rest in who Jesus is and that he is still who he says he is. He is still the Alpha and the Omega. I love John Maxwell says it like this. We need to intentionally value others and express that value to them. It's not optional if we desire to be significant. I think sometimes we're praying for people. Don't stop praying. That's the whole point of the prayer card that we have. Pray for those people. But don't just pray for them. Add value to them. Show value to them. I must go to your house today. N.T. Wright, the theologian, says this. He didn't give them a theory. He gave them a meal. You can believe it. You can feel it. You can tell people about it. But it's even better to show it. Valuing people is at the heart of God. And, and here, it's regardless of their response. It's regardless of the result that you see. We value others because they are valuable. I, I know it's maybe basic this morning, but for God so loved us that he gave his only son that whosoever believes shall have everlasting life. I think sometimes it's so easy to be so comfortable and familiar with these verses that we don't realize the value that Jesus has placed on our lives. And we don't carry that value over into the lives of other people. We are so valuable. And that person that's so annoying at work and that kid that just doesn't get it is so valuable. They are, they are a daughter. They are a son of God. And we must begin showing them value. Jesus showed value to Zacchaeus. It is extravagant love and value is the core of God's heart. Not, not perfect theological arguments. You can have all of the best responses that you want, but it is when you show value that you're going to break through. 
We engage the most by showing. I love this. This, this was not plan B. Zacchaeus, my other plans fell through, and I'm like, have to be here. I'm paid to be here at work. So it's like, okay, here, I'm going to come to your house. I must go to your house today. My other plans are like now plan B. I must go there. Extravagant value. Point number three, Jesus engaged him now. I'm going to your house today, not tomorrow, not next time in town, not, hey, I've been thinking about you. Let's catch up soon. I need to connect with you today. Verse 7 says this, and when they, excuse me, James 4.13, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. There is such, and, and I'm not saying that we have to, to stress. We're not striving in the now. It's not, oh, I missed this opportunity. No, no, it's walking in grace in the opportunities that God is bringing you right now. You're not stressed that you missed this because God is still on the throne. He is still sovereign. But what it does do is it, it says that this opportunity in front of you is the only one that you can manage. You can't manage the one that's coming tomorrow. And, and too often I think we just, it's, even if we want to engage them where they're at, but we just say, yeah, I'm going to engage you tomorrow. I see you every day. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't see them tomorrow. Engage now. Engage today, not tomorrow. Don't wait for them to get to the perfect place. Engage them now. And don't wait for you to be in the perfect place. I often think that's the biggest barrier is when I'm feeling strong enough, when I'm feeling confident enough, when I've read my Bible enough this morning, when I've prayed enough, God, that's when I'm going to start letting you use me appropriately. Man, you know, he uses the foolish things of the world. He, he uses, I, I named my daughter, her name is Alexa Oksana Northway. Alexa means defender and Oksana means worship, defender of worship. It's that passage of scripture that, that says even the rocks will cry out. And just, you know, the encouragement that we would love to speak over her life is that the rocks will never have to cry out because she will always be praising. And this morning, that's the encouragement. Let's not let, let's not get to the point where the rocks have to start crying out. But God can use you and he can use me in a mighty way. This morning, I would love to speak faith into your hearts as we go to the word and see how Jesus engaged. He engaged, he engaged them where they were at. He engaged them now and he added value to them. I always, I'm always challenged by this most because how many ministers' children suffer at the hands of ministry? And it was one of those things, I had a loving stepfather who was in ministry, and he, he was able to speak over my life, but it was something that's so important that we can't miss the kids that are in front of us right here to go after someone over here. Let's still go after them too. We don't have to stop doing that, but we must begin here. And, and when we talk about valuing people that are not in the seats, are we valuing the ones that are in the seats? Are we engaging? Are we loving? Are we pressing in? Because there is so much value don't wait for tomorrow to begin showing what's in your heart. Begin releasing it today. Amen? Point number four. We've touched on this already, but it's important enough to just identify it. We need to see people as Jesus saw them. Verse seven. And when the people saw it, they all grumbled. They all grumbled. He has gone into, talking about Jesus, to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. They're grumbling. The way we view others determines how we approach them. They saw Zacchaeus as a sinner. And I'm, I'm, we already said, man, are we sinners this morning? I was like, yes, yes, right? But we need to understand, have a sense of the truth and the blessing of what God can and will do in someone's life. Not their current sin or their current place, we need to see the transformation, not the transgression. If we want to begin engaging people, we have to start seeing how God sees them and the transformation that is possible through Him. If we see this, if we see this through His eyes, it will compel us to engage. But if we're looking at the transgression, it will repel us to go the other way. How, we've, how we see people 
completely changes the way how we approach them. I like to say, seeing through heaven's eyes, we, we, we pray the Lord's Prayer so often, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If our role is to see a little bit of heaven be expressed through us, see his kingdom just burst out in small places and small ways, we must start seeing that transformation that is possible. Faith is seeing and believing for that transformation in Christ before it has fully arrived. Seeing the transformation in someone fully before it's come to fruition. Do you know what the name Zacchaeus means? Zacchaeus literally means pure and innocent. How interesting that what everybody else had come to the conclusion, and he had lived up to it too. I'm not, Zacchaeus doesn't get out, of, get out of jail free card, right? He was a sinner. He had stolen a lot of their money. He was a tax collector. But what was his name? What did Jesus already see? He said that through me, you are pure and innocent. We need to see Jesus through the lens of, we need to see people through the lens of, of Jesus, through heaven. To partner with Jesus, to see his kingdom come down, we need to know what we are attempting to release and express. You've got to see a picture of who someone can be before you can bring it. And this encouragement that this would apply from family to strangers. I always think sometimes we think mission is like that random person that we might see on the street. Let us engage them, but let's also engage those closest to us from all those furthest away from us. Verse 8 says this, And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. I think it's too easy for me to forget this very thing. That Jesus comes and he brings radical transformation. Romans 1.16 says this, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. It's not the power of your argument. It's not the power of your love. And we talked about adding value. It's not even how much you add value. But it's the gospel that is the power of God for salvation. And it has no less power today than it has ever had. Jesus transforms. He is on the throne and he is powerful. It is not in our ability, but it is, it, it is in his ability. This morning, as we engage on the field, it can be so tempting to step out in our own strength. It's so easy to say, hey, this is going to be based on my talent. This is going to be based, I have to just get right. No, it's the power of God's. We simply have to be faithful and obedient. Are you going to do it perfectly? By no means. My, my boy, Archer. He was so sick, he couldn't even run as half as he could, but he was running as hard as he could. And I would rather have somebody who's sick and who's giving it everything than, than somebody who's lost in the corner playing a different game or who's somebody who's getting out of the way of the ball. Because can I tell you, even though they lost, he scored maybe four or five goals. He saved maybe four or five goals. There is an impact happening in the kingdom. Your situation is never going to be perfect. The church that we go to is never going to be perfect. There's never going to be the best Sunday to invite someone. There's never going to be, even as amazing as Space Coast City Fest is, that's not going to be perfect. There's going to be things gone wrong, and the people that you're praying for are going to be busy that day. But it is not human plans. It is the Spirit of God. And who does He use? He uses us. In our weakness. But I love this whole idea that when we are weak, he is made strong. The encouragement this, this morning is that you have something powerful to give. Let's not just turn up, but let's engage. As we engage and as we point to Jesus, as we do our part, then God does the part that only he can do. And he can and he will transform lives. Let's not stop forgetting that he is in the business of transforming lives. I love the, where, where he is also a son of Abraham. He was created in the image of God just like you and I. He is part of inheritance. He has a legacy. Jesus came to seek, 
to look for, to find, and save the lost. And I'm almost wrapping up here. How many of you played hide and seek? It's a good game. I play it with my boys, and like the best, the best part of hide and seek is if um, they go hide and then I take a break. You know, like, <laughs> I, you know, you count to, I don't know, however many, like, and like they're hiding. And then, like, you know, it's kind of probably almost time to start looking for them. Dad! You know, like when they start giving away where they're at. But how many of you know? My poor kids, man. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. If no one's seeking, no one's going to be found. When somebody stops seeking, no matter the reason, even if you're like a hard work dad and you love your kids, right? Can we be a people that continue to push, continue to seek, continue to look for, continue to bless, continue to get hit in the face by the ball sometimes, but we keep pressing. We push through our sickness. We push through our fear of pain. We push through even maybe some social circles that are stopping us from going in. Can we push into all that God has for us to engage, not just be present, not just to exist, but to be powerfully used of God and to see the power of the gospel impact lives? We must not always be passing through, but looking, but seeking as we go. Jesus' mission must be ours to see heaven invade earth in the lives of the people around us. We don't want to be a church that is simply present in Brevard. We want to be a church that is engaged with the people of Brevard. Amen.